let us bow in prayer. O God, out of all the words which are sung this day, out of all the words which are spoken, out of all the words which are heard, may it be Your living Word that remains and abides with us through the power of the Spirit and in the name of the risen Christ, we pray. And let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. What's your favorite Easter candy? What's your favorite? Oh, I heard a moan thinking of that sugar buzz. Maybe it's those egg-sized M&Ms. I'd never seen them before this year, but there's plenty of chocolate in there, I'm sure. Or if you really want to get your chocolate buzz on, maybe it's one of those chocolate Easter bunnies, the kind that you make sure to eat the ears first. And you are willing to share a little bit of it, but inside you secretly don't want to share any of it. Or maybe for Easter it's jelly beans for you, and all the colors, all the flavors. One of my Facebook friends posted a photo of himself with a whole bunch of peeps that someone had sent him. You know, those pastel-colored, marshmallow-filled Easter chicks that come in all those cool colors and my friend hates peeps someone had sent him those peeps as a joke my favorite has always been the pastel colored whoppers you know the chocolate um, malted milk balls and this year they have them shaped like little robin's eggs I always figured that these were one of the healthiest Easter candies you could get <laughs> until I saw a dietitian's list of Easter candies from the healthiest to the least healthy and it came out at the very bottom of the list. <laughs> well, it turns out that those Robin's eggs, the malted milk Well, Robin's eggs have 29 grams of of sugar in them, twice as much as a chocolate-filled donut. I didn't think that's going to cure me, though. But when you get right down to it, Easter's not about chocolate. It's not about chocolate Easter eggs or chocolate Easter bunnies. Much as we love them, why are we here? We come to hear the Easter story. We come to whisper the Easter story. We come to sing the Easter story. We come to shout the Easter story. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Yes, what do we expect this Easter morning? Matthew tells us in his Gospel today that as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, went to see the tomb. They didn't go to look for hope. They did not go to look for new life. They went to see the tomb. They went to see Jesus' burial place. Like Mary and Mary on that first Easter dawn, We know what death is about. We hear about it all the time on the news. Or we're pierced to the heart with a loved one who is dying. We know what death is about. One summer day when our son Colin was four years old, he came into the house after being outside playing and and he said, Mom, guess what I saw on the ground? I saw a bird that had lost its song. I don't think I can describe death better than that. I saw a bird that lost its song. Easter begins with hope losing its song. All that these two brave women disciples expected to see that morning in the dawn was a massive stone (coughs) rolled against the mouth of the cave where Jesus had been buried. And this is no stone made of foam, no stone made of paper mache. We all, I think, have our 
massive stones that seal away our our hopes and our dreams sometimes. We say to ourselves, God disappointed me back when this and that happened. I'll never trust God again. Or we say, she's hopeless. Or we say, he'll never get over his addiction. But our Easter story continues. It continues with an earthquake, with the guards finding that God is rocking their world, and with an angel rolling away that massive stone and sitting on top of it as if to say, that's what I think of you, death, as if to say, we need to talk. And the angel says to the two women, do not be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has been raised as He said. Could it be that death is not in the ascendancy, but life is? Could it be that despair is not in the ascendancy, but hope is? Could it be that those who called out, crucify Him, crucify Him, and the brutal Roman executioners were not in the ascendancy, but forgiveness was? As Jesus cried out from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We see the very heart of God. Could that be in the ascendancy instead? Could it be that the love of Christ has not been vanquished after all? Now it's interesting that this first resurrection news is not just about going to heaven someday as precious as that is in our hearts. No, this great, glad Easter news is also about what God is doing now. What God is doing now. Mary and Mary are to go and tell the other disciples that Jesus has been raised from the dead and that, quote, He is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see Him. Mary and Mary have a job to do in the here and the now, you see. They are apostles to the apostles. The original Greek language of the New Testament tells us that the word apostle really means one who is sent. One who is sent. And Mary and Mary are the first apostles to the apostles. They are sent with the Easter news. And the disciples have a job to do in the here and the now. They are to go up north to Galilee to meet Jesus where He is going ahead of them. Where is Christ going ahead of you in your life? As someone has said, you can't prove the resurrection by looking backwards, only by looking forwards to where God is at work in your life, where God is at work in your world, our world. As the German pastor and theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer once said, a man who died defying the Nazis, he said, God is following God is not in the first place thinking about one's own needs, problems, sins, and fears, but allowing oneself to get caught up in the way of Jesus Christ. How can you and I get caught up in the way of Jesus Christ today? Where is Christ going ahead of you in your life? Maybe you want to get serious about prayer or about creation care, care of God's green earth. Maybe something's pulling at your heartstrings, and it's time to serve God in some new way. Or maybe you've never been baptized, and you're feeling that pull to, to be baptized. Or maybe it's time to recommit your life to Christ. Where is Christ going ahead of you? Next. We read that Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell His disciples. I love the gut honesty here. They run 
And they run with fear and great joy. There's such a combination there. Sometimes when you're asked to do a big thing, when you're asked to stretch way out of your comfort zone, you have that sense of a fear that's really a sense of awe. And it's mixed with great joy. They ran with fear and great joy. They know in their guts that something has happened here at this rock tomb. One of the reasons why I believe that something earth-shaking happened that first Easter is because there had been a lot of would-be messiahs running around the previous couple of of centuries who had raised enthusiastic groups of followers. And once these messiahs had been squashed by the Roman authorities, their followers had trudged home hanging their heads. But what did Jesus' disciples do? They headed out away from their comforts, away from their homes, and powerfully told the story that Christ is alive, risking their lives for this message, for their witness to this message. You don't do that for a hallucination or for a hoax or for some nice memory that you've cooked up together. And surely if they had cooked this up somehow, some wise judge or governor or theologian or philosopher would easily have debunked it within the first generation. Or the disciples' story would have frayed one by one by one. And so Mary Magdalene and Mary, mother of James and Joseph, run They run to tell the disciples. And we read that suddenly Jesus meets them. And they come to Him and take hold of His feet and worship Him. And what does Jesus do? He tells them to go and tell the disciples to meet Him up in Galilee. This is telling. It is telling because our natural reaction would have also been to hang on to Jesus, to hold on to His feet, to embrace Jesus after all that had happened. But Jesus tells Mary and Mary to go on to share the glad Easter news that He has risen. I wouldn't be here today if someone hadn't shared that glad Easter news with me, if someone hadn't modeled this living Christ in my life, if someone hadn't been like Jesus to me in a real way. A mom was preparing pancakes for her two kids, Kevin who was five and Ryan who was three. The boys began to argue over who would get the first pancake. You ever done that? And their mother saw a perfect opportunity for a little moral lesson. She said, if Jesus were sitting here, he would say, let my brother have the first pancake. I can wait. Well, Kevin pondered this for just a moment, and then he turned to his younger brother and said, Ryan, you be Jesus. (laughs) In all seriousness... I wouldn't be here today if I had not experienced Christ in the life of the lives of people around me as a youth, as a young adult, and time by time by time in various other places in my adult life, even in the dark night of the soul at times. And that's why the church is here. To share the love of the living Christ by our words. And in the words of the prophet Micah, to share the living Christ by doing justice and loving kindness and walking humbly with our God. One of my mentors is a pastor. In closing tells about a long discussion one evening about all the deficiencies of the church. And we could go on and on. All of us could go on and on about the deficiencies of the institutional church. 
But there was this evening discussion of this, and he said that a woman suddenly blurted out, I spent 38 years of my life thinking that God was mad at me. I tried this and that to get God to like me. When I came here for the first time, I heard that God was love. I heard that God was grace. I heard about God's unconditional love for me. And I got my world rocked. This church, this church is the place where God finally brought me to my senses and I saw the light. My sisters, my brothers, you are loved. You are loved. You are loved. Christ is risen. He is risen risen indeed. Christ is risen. He He is is risen indeed. indeed. And let every